That admission came from the league's senior vice president of health and safety, Jeff Miller. Now, Miller was participating in a roundtable discussion about concussions with lawmakers. Here's the exchange. Do you think there is a link between football and degenerative brain disorders like CTE? Well, certainly, uh, Dr. McKee's research shows that a number of retired uh, NFL players were diagnosed with CTE. So they're, the answer to that question is, is certainly yes. Miller is referring to a study from Boston University where 90 out of 94 former NFL players had the debilitating brain disease, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Now, for years, the NFL has avoided saying whether or not football is related to CTE, saying instead that that is up to the medical community to decide. And this is, though, as you mentioned, Rhiannon, a big, big admission. Now, Koi, you played in the NFL for nine years, but why has it taken the league so long to come out with this admission? Well, the league has simply been waiting on brain studies. There were not enough studies or medical proof for them to make a direct connection between football and CTE. But the recent studies at Boston University were an impetus for the change in their perspective. Many questions remain regarding the disease, like what other sports could lead to CTE. Recently, U.S. Women's National Team soccer legend Brandi Chastain announced that she is going to allow her brain to be studied after she passes away. Remember, the disease can only be detected posthumously. Will other soccer players now, other athletes from other sports begin to donate their brains for study? What about the general public? There's still so much to learn about this disease, but the NFL's recent admission is certainly a key factor in the quest to understanding CTE completely. Rhiannon, you could say that a perceived roadblock has now been removed in part of this equation.